just jump into I guess I should have teased this guest in the beginning of the show, Steve. I guess I messed up on that one, but a very important well, person. Did, I think. <laughs> well, surprise. Yeah, I guess we can call it a surprise, surprise guest. Very important guy that we need to talk to about, especially with Para Works and Para. Dave from Para. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? <laughs> Oh. I'm good. I'm looking at your camera setup and it looks sharp. I didn't oh, pre appreciate it. Appreciate <laughs> it. Thank you for coming. I know you're a busy, busy guy, and I really appreciate you coming in and talking about Paraworks and how important it is. I, I think it's still early on when Steve was telling me about some of the first things that you guys were able to provide gig workers. It's, it's been over a year, I assume. Like it's been a while since the first initial, I uh, guess, gigs that you guys were able to provide some gig workers. I think it's, has it been a year? It's been pretty much a year. Yeah. And I think what I've learned is it's, you know, been a year of hard work. I think, you know, we were sort of balancing, trying to keep tip transparency up at Lingwood DoorDash while building this stuff on the side. So I think we came out quick at the beginning with the sort of merchandising trips that were pretty good. But frankly, I learned, I think, you know, that it's one thing, one, it's not that easy to find a consistent high paying work. But I think even mm. when you find that uh, most of the work where it's gone into has been more of the, how can you make it really frictionless for somebody to do that work? Right. So I think what you'll notice for some of these new opportunities is, uh, I like, I call this idea of the idea that like you should be able to unlock the opportunity with your gig profile, right? So if there is a new opportunity that pays well, if you have a couple thousand trips on DoorDash at a high rating, you have an active background check, you shouldn't have to download the app, fill out the application, wait three to five days, and then scan the app on an ongoing basis. We've tried to basically on our side say, hey, your gig history, your resume should be the key. Basically, right. I think we put a lot of work into that. Uh, what that really looks like is this idea that for some of these trips now, you get a ping in the Para app if you agree to sort of uh, to say, hey, I want to sign up for this, basically we will auto register you. You'll just get a text saying, hey, click here to download the other app. The login's already created. The trip you've accepted is already assigned to you. You mm. can just do the work. Basically. Nice. And I think nice. that's where uh, it's taken us a while to do it, but uh, we have the beginning of a floor where we can build more on. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. I mean, it, it, it's going back to you saying, like, if you put the effort in, you, you have a long track record that you should be rewarded or at least be recognized compared to other apps where they seem like there's a lot of, a, it's more on trying to get the new person in with, with a good, either, you know, good algorithm role for a couple of weeks, right? Like, Hey, I'm getting all these great offers. They, they really must like me. No, you just knew. And they got to keep, they want you, they got to keep you going um, or providing a top dash of status for someone who hasn't been on the app, trying to bring that person back in. But what you guys are saying, like, if, you, if you're consistent and you've put in work, you should be at least recognized for that. And things should be easy, especially on taking on new gigs. So I think that's pretty awesome, actually. No, thank you. I think it starts with, hey, you should unlock this opportunity. But call me crazy. I think over time, this idea of you should be rewarded for your past work history, too. Because I think, like, a driver who's done a lot of work has a higher economic value than a new driver, right? Less customer support costs happier customer, which leads to more things. I do think this idea of like your work resume should both unlock work, which should also potentially get you paid higher. Yeah, because how that's how it should be, right? Like the more experience, the more you can command in the marketplace in terms of your skills and how long you've been doing it. So no, I think that that's that's pretty awesome um, in terms of that. Um, and just going back, because we, you know, we, I guess we're doing like a quick question answer, like really basic power uh, works kind of, uh, a video here. So the work that you'll be currently be doing for the most part is large, large orders, like kind of a catering stuff. Is it shopping apps? Like what, what yeah. kind of gigs I'll be receiving? On, Good on question. Those? So I'd say a big portion of them right now are large order catering. So we'd heard from a lot of dashers that they love the large order programs. So basically it's like, if people like it and it pays well, how do we find more of those? So right now, uh, I think in sort of LA, San Francisco, Chicago, Seattle, DC, New York, Philly, Miami, and Denver, we are live with some trips. We are working on getting more in those cities, but working hard. Uh, so so their lunch catering is a big one. And then we have sort of a couple others. So we have uh, e-commerce delivery. And these are sort of more like our block opportunities. So, you know, pick, show up at a warehouse and deliver it, but that pays really well. 
Uh, we have sort of like an artisan good delivery. So we have one here that goes from San Jose to Sacramento every Saturday. It's uh, it's sort of crazy. It's like a six to eight hour shift, but they pay 35 bucks per hour for the nice. eight hour shift basically. Uh, so it's a long drive, but they're pretty popular. We're doing sort of 26 to 36 of them every Saturday here in the Bay Area. Uh, the other sort of work uh, is around sort of returns pickups right now. So sort of uh, I'm quite bullish on that because I think come January, I've heard from a lot of people that January is generally slower. But I think yes. this might be something that could counter that because we all know people shop during Christmas and then have shit to return, right? So, <laughs> yeah. David, I want to roll back just a little bit before you got on here, which was, uh, and I think I answered it correctly anyway, but what happens to the para worker or to the worker who has a para profile node and it's not so favorable? Uh, what, what do you mean by that? Ratings, that kind of, you know, like, I mean, when it's being passed over from para to the para works system, it's almost like you're getting a fresh start, but you might sit at the bottom of a round robin until you start that fresh start. Is that kind of? Uh, actually, that's a really good question. I mean, so far what we've found is that I guess most of the people who use Para take their delivery work pretty seriously. So I guess most of the Para Works profiles we've seen are people who take their work seriously, have done a good number of trips, et cetera. So we haven't really run into that. I think for me, it really is, is like, if you're above, you know, if you're quality, you should unlock. I mean, to some extent, I think over time, there'll be this concept to some partners of, I don't think you'll penalize some, like, it's sort of like, there's a floor. If people are above that floor, yep. they're able to do the work, but it's more of the- Well, and, and also doing pair work jobs allows you to rebuild yourself too. Yeah. And I think that's really where we're going to some partners and saying, hey, if you want a five-star service, you should pay a bit more basically, right? Like you can get it, but you just have to pay a bit more for that. Yeah. Uh, but I think, you know, to, with sort of the different types of work, uh, there's a couple that partners that I'm like uh, trying out right now. And I'd actually love to hear sort of Hannibal's suggestions here. So for me, it's sort of a pharmacy delivery. I think that's something that we have oh, a yes. that I'm trying out right now. And I think really I stick by the things like I'm not going to put something in the system that I haven't at least tried myself and can vouch for. So I'm doing pharmacy delivery this holiday. I'm doing some corporate catering. Uh, I've heard from Steve that I need to check out luggage returns to some extent. I've been doing e-commerce you need, returns. You need to watch people. all these beyond the algorithms. <laughs> and you talked about in. all this stuff, man. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a fun one too. Is we have a partner starting in Dallas in January where they're doing food delivery in sports arenas. So that's from the sort of... Uh, you know, from the sort of uh, concession stands to the seats. Uh, but if you love sports, that sounds like a pretty, like, you know, I love basketball. I would have Yeah, that would, that would be pretty kind of cool just to be doing that for, you know, an hour or two. That, actually, that, that would be interesting. Um, yeah. So there's a few questions I saw. Um, is there a video for how to use PowerWorks? Yeah. Um, the Power Channel. Uh, I got, I'll actually put a link in. Um, I think it's like a minute video they released a, released a month ago, uh, just breaking down and in, introducing PowerWorks. Uh, and there's so another I'll, one I'll put that the was dropped as well. like a week ago too. Yeah, I'm gonna throw These a bunch of links videos. in here. Uh, yeah, but, uh, short, yeah, like a minute video. Yeah, the with uh, with para.com backslash paraworks is really the primary. Yeah. That's where everybody should go for a landing page. Yeah, uh, Dash Dairy TV. Love these ideas. I definitely agree that putting in more work. Should you get you should get more out of it? I totally agree. And check out Dash Dairy TV. He has a channel, guys. Uh, really cool, cool, awesome dude. Um, so my question is to you guys, and it's probably more of a more I guess on your end. So you guys have the Power app, but now you're it's like another entity with Power Works. I know you guys are a small group in terms of just putting this together. It must be a lot of work to talk to part potential partners. You know, show them your business model, show them why you think this is a better idea than what they're currently doing. And at the same time, deal with an app that, you you know, you're introducing more features on, you know, accept the client, you have all these features. How do you guys have enough time in a day to do all that? Like how much hours of sleep are you guys getting? I know and Steve I'm doesn't tired. sleep. But... <laughs> I'm tired. David, of David doesn't sleep either, dude. So none of you guys are sleeping. <laughs> 
<laughs> I've also I've gained thirty five pounds. <laughs> that's not, that's not great. Ever since I met David, we both had that problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean it's a lot. I mean, it's... And... Uh, but I think yeah. I, I, we're yeah. happy to do the work because I think it all fits together, right? So like, you, there's one thing saying, "Hey, go get more work," right? And you know, people I've heard this from people being like, there's, like, there's sort of two things going on. You've got like a set decline TT, you've got this work stuff. But to me, it all sort of fits into one experience, which is it needs to be frictionless. There should be, you know, if I have 10 more work opportunities on top of the DoorDash and the Amazon Flex and the other stuff I'm doing, you can't juggle all of that, right? Which is yeah. why the sort of uh the ASEP decline, the auto decline, the transparency on the trips, it all fits together because without each of those pieces, you can't build towards sort of that goal. And I guess the goal, how I put it is called sort of like building a personal dispatch system on behalf of each worker, right? Yeah. So it can unlock all your opportunities. You can put in the preferences you want and it will just, you know, go and figure, like do that for you essentially. Gotcha. Uh, Brian Kern said he had uh, three PowerWorks offers in, in his area. Pittsburgh. And he's in Pittsburgh, so uh, I love that, Brian. yeah, yeah so, like and, and even I don't think you mentioned uh, Pennsylvania, but you guys are going, you guys are uh, flying really fast. I mean, Steve kind of said this a couple of weeks ago, like, yeah, this is going pretty quickly in terms of different partners and in, in across the country. So, PowerWorks looks like, or at least it's not even looks like it is another app to make money, like you know, multi apping as we like to call it. Well, it's right there too, where you potentially can get um, a large uh, catering order. And I know you guys are looking for the highest paid offers. Is is that what it is really? Like catering order, orders are going to probably be the bulk of those um, PowerWorks offers? Yeah, I think it's anything that pays, like the goal right now is significantly more than the platforms. And what that looks like is generally catering. I think some of the ones that y'all have talked about in this channel sort of pharmacy, luggage, and also just people who want to pay for quality, I think is the other one, right? So I have noticed that, that we, you know, why a lot of the catering companies are, uh, catering is actually being pulled from DoorDash. So the large order program has actually lost a couple contracts to local delivery service providers, because when you're delivering a thousand bucks of food, quality matters, yeah. right? And people are willing to pay more for that. And I think those are really sort of the buckets are sort of like untapped industry, people who are willing to pay for quality uh, and just sort of uh, interesting work, essentially. I was wondering if it's possible for medical courier stuff, but I know that's a little bit more. They got you know well, so certain situations and stuff like that's, that. But. That's what I was going to say is last mile delivery service. I mean, we we actually had a team meeting with Curry, and I know that Brian is on Curry, and some of these other people. I know some people are still trying. I talk about Curry a lot. But we yep. actually met with Curry because they needed to be able to populate areas quickly. And they don't, they, you know, they have their system, but at the same time, they want, they want the best of the best. They don't want people who unassign or don't follow through or don't take any pride in their work or don't show up or all the factors that happen in gig land all the time. Yeah. So, I mean, where's that, where that's gone? I don't know. I mean, we might revisit that. I'm just saying that that has happened. That meeting has happened. So last mile services aren't out either. I mean, that's because that's another high paying space. Um, I have a question. I guess we both guys, we both of you guys can answer or at least answer this. In terms of the future of gig work, um, we have, we see technology, right? Technology is supposed to be helping. Um, Steve doesn't like robots. So, you know, drones are coming. He doesn't like that. You know, driverless cars, he don't like that either. Uh, <laughs> I do but, when their time comes, but we're not there. We're, <laughs> we're not there yet. Um, but what kind of technology do you think will be most beneficial to gig workers in the future? I mean, obviously, I think Power and PowerWorks is probably it. Um, but, like, what do you think in terms of, like, what is the most beneficial uh technology or can be for gig workers in the future steve that's <laughs> um well for one okay let me let me point something out here that i really find crazy annoying is that um like uber runs facial recognition software based on microsoft so over in other countries um people of color women uh nighttime these all add into a bad ratio where it's like they run it in the 60 percent for efficiency 
But I'll tell you what, you guys, if I don't have it with, right near me, but if I pick up my Apple phone and I do this, it turns on. If anybody else in the room does it, it doesn't turn on. So guess what? Apple has facial recognition software. And I put this in, into the same category as they use Checker because it's cheap. They use crappy facial recognition software because they don't want to pay for the good stuff. I mean, yeah. these, these are problems, effort. you guys. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's like they're, yeah. you know, like, you know, like if, if you're paying, if I don't even know what the exact amount is, but if, if Checker charges $250 for a background check and all of a sudden they charge $2,500, but they're going to be really good background checks. Uber and Lyft and all those guys would move away from that and go to the cheapest one immediately. This yeah. isn't about, so our safety, it's not, you know, when we talk about safety and stuff, it's not just like, what can you do to protect yourself? The apps aren't going to do it. The apps actually, in my opinion, go out of their way to not protect you because they're just going with the cheapest on everything. Yeah. Try, I, don't my, try I, to I, don't, I don't like that. Yeah. You know? I think sort of my, my thoughts are, I mean, tooting our own horn a bit, but I think it really is comes down to two things, right? It's like, you you need sort of, I mean, talking about robots, sort of, I, I call it the personal dispatch system. Another way to view it is sort of a robot working for you, right? Is mm. you need something that represents your preferences that talks back to these systems. And that way you will actually, as an individual and collectively drivers will be able to sort of push back a bit on these platforms a bit when you are able to have your preferences heard. So to right. some extent, I want to be able to have a system where you can say, hey, I want to make the most money, but sometimes you want to tell it like, Hey, I got to pick up my daughter from school at 1 PM. So I can only drive in a 10 mile radius, the three hours beforehand, you better not bring me out of that radius. Cause I've got to be there at 1 PM. And I, by the way, I'm Steve. So I hate Instacart. Right? <laughs> Don't give me any Instacart. <laughs> right. Uh, I think that's super important. And I think the other leg of that also is for your preferences to be heard. You need to be able to have more competition for your time. And I think right now, what we've seen in the last couple of years is people are able to get more apps, which is great, right? But I think there's a friction to do those and the apps put friction on that on purpose, right? So it's really what you need is that competition for your unit of time, which will allow prices to go up, people to earn more drivers to act, the platforms to actually listen to your preferences. So the way I put it right now, right, is a, you know, if you're thinking about even lunchtime in a city, there's DoorDash, Uber Eats, etc. that you could be using your time, but there's also these catering companies. And there's also now sort of a Walmart Spark and a bunch of these, there's actually six or seven or eight different options. It just right now, the friction means that there isn't really that competition for your time. Yeah. And so I think a, a little bit of a wonky answer there, but those are sort of the two pillars, I think, uh, yeah, that are important. And, 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 you know, and what you guys are doing is slowly bringing that power back to the gig workers. So I'm definitely um, thankful uh, for that. But um, the future of Paraworks, it just seems like there's going to be more partners. It's going to be all over the place. I know Steve is, uh, is out there uh, pushing this really uh, hard. And we may see even more recognizable partners. I mean, you know, Jimmy John's and Sweet Green, like I, I've. I know those, those are usually when you get those, you get pretty good offers. So going back to what you're saying, trying to find the best merchants, um, in terms of your partners and how you're looking for them, is it just, Hey, you make sure that you're, you're, you're offering good pay and you're, you're not, you know, you're not like some of these fast food restaurants where it's a lot of, it's a lot of volume, but not a lot of care about what they're doing. So like, are you guys targeting certain? um partners or like you're doing a blanket kind of sweep like how, how how is that process in terms of finding the partners to work for yeah i think it's a balance i think what's important is the partners we're very up clear as we're a driver first company partners need to treat drivers well they have to have transparency they have to give all the details that they have and be able to pass that on to drivers that's super important to us two uh i think we sort of actually have a driver code of conduct on the website and we do sort of uh, what I say by sort of driver code of contact is for the partners, basically. Uh, okay. let me just make sure here, right? You know, I think uh, it's on the it's on the driver's yeah. side too. Yeah, I, like you know, workers must be treated well with respect, must be paid properly for their time, must benefit from this opportunity, and must receive all payment details. So that's super important. On the flip side, 
we are picky, but the goal really is to get as many good opportunities in front of as many drivers on the system as quickly as we can. So it's a bit of a balance between both of those. Like, you know, you, uh, so that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. Okay. And so, by, I want to, yeah, I want to compare one thing, David, are you, are you familiar? So I think you're familiar with the nursing apps. There was like two of them that launched national where you can like travel and be a nurse and through the yes, app, sir. you can work at different hospitals. Okay. Well, there's now, uh, there's now health gig job services. And so that one actually is awesome, dude. It's the same thing. You can go be a nurse or other things and be kind of, you can travel city to city and work, but here's the thing. They use a hashtag system. So you can put like dialysis specialist or, uh, oncology, uh, specialist or whatever your, your, what you really like doing, kind of what you were talking about, what you like doing, what you're good at doing. And it actually places you better than like staff would when they hire you in because they just ask you, Hey, are you qualified for this job? Sure. And then if you start talking, they don't care. They're not listening. It's like, we deal with a thousand people. I, I don't know what you're talking about, but here you can put that in. It actually helps place you into where you're going to be best suited, best needed. Yeah. Um, and they're just getting nothing but rave rewards. I sat next to a lady on a plane who was a traveling nurse and she was explaining the whole thing to me and it sort of blew my mind. She's like, I spent two months here and two months there and, you know, seems to fit her life and she's doing great. I was sort of surprised. But I agree with sort of the hashtag thing. I think we launched a new ParaWorks profile last week. And what this is is basically like, hey, connect your, if you have your gig accounts connected, you can import your work history and sort of build out a little resume. So right now you'll have sort of DoorDash and Grubhub and a couple of these there. Uh, but where I think it gets, you know, we're going to continue to build that out, right? So I want to be able to have a profile that people can be proud of, right? So this is all the work that I've done. This shows off, you know, how, you know, the quality that I've done, how many years I've been working. I want to be able to add traits and hashtags and what people like. And really is this idea that yeah, you own your work history. You should be proud of it. So I think more to come there right now. It's, you know, still pretty sparse, but uh, here you on the hashtags. Yeah. I I think it's a great idea and it may not be something that most drivers probably think about in terms of like, what's the most beneficial for me to, you know, make the most money, but it's kind of like a under very highly underrated aspect of gig work where, you know, and I'm going back to my Rover stuff, but my Rover profile, you see my face, you see my experience. I wrote, wrote about what I've done and you see my reviews and, those are really helpful um, for people who are looking to, to hire someone, even if it's, like I said, uh, contractor work or, or whatever. So I think, that, and also you just look at it. You look at it like, hey, I've built this. This is all, all the stuff I've done. It makes you feel a little better. And obviously other people who are looking for a career to actually get the work done and take pride of, of what they're doing. I think that's important. It may not seem uh, for, for many people, but I, I think it's a good idea. Um, to build, like I said, that your your personal um, work history, your brand, who you are, I think it is really important. Uh, <laughs> the Pedro David for <laughs> I think he he's got a lot of yeah a lot of work in terms of uh, power work. I don't think he has enough time, and he's not sleeping either. You know, I can't be pre have to be president. <laughs> um, but I don't know, guys. I I think you guys. But put out a really good, I guess, presentation on Paraworks. I know you got the videos coming out. Um, more work is being done. So, I don't know, guys, tell me more about the future of Paraworks. Like, what are you guys going to be doing over the next couple of uh, months to really push this thing? I'm going to blow yeah. it up here in Denver. I'm getting ready. <laughs> yeah. like, it's yeah. right yeah. after this new year, Dave and I, when there's a little downtime, Dave and I are going to talk. And uh, I, I got some ideas too. So, yeah, yeah hopefully, I'm gonna, I'm gonna getting blow more this up. For me, it really is sort of a chatting and getting more trips, right? I think right now that's the biggest one is, you know, it's great for people to hear about it, but let's actually get work for people to do. I think what I'm excited for in Q1 is based off of chatting to some partners. We're uh, in Q1 right now. The plan is Indy, Nashville, Minneapolis, Orlando, Atlanta, Cleveland, Kansas City, San Diego, and Phoenix. All the major players. Uh, yep. Uh, I think, you know, really it is uh, just... Uh, 
that's important, but I think really within those and the ones we're currently in, it's just what can we do to get more work, basically. Uh, so that's where we are. But we feel, we feel good. We feel good. Yeah. I, I mean, from the last time we talked, uh, at least what Steve was telling me about this, it's it's you guys are going 100 miles per hour compared you're going to zero to 100 compared to how it was before to now um you guys are going pretty fast so i'm assuming for us to help out with para just download the app right like what else can you, like download the app check out the work do it well, well si sign up for para works too. Again, it's, for not works, a, yeah. it's not a form just put the app on just hit it just go to para yeah. works and hit i want to i want in it'll 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 walk you through it in seconds yeah Why don't also, you sign like, up I know a lot of sort of folks remembered us for tip transparency, but on the other side of things, check out, we're constantly improving that auto decline stuff too. So I was just playing yeah. around today. Uh, so we have sort of two new things that are around the corner. One, you can set a radius and say, I don't want to leave this radius basically. So you can say, don't, you know, reject Which I've everything. I've been asking for, for a while. Uh, yep. Yes. You, you asked for it and it's in the works. And the other one that I'm quite excited about is you can put in the name of restaurants that you don't want. So Taco Bell, McDonald's, Popeyes. Uh, um, I don't Popeyes. know if you saw a video about it. <laughs> Popeyes. I, I heard that when I wrote the back page just now. You said something about lice and food or bed bugs and food or something. Yeah, it's listen. I, I'm taking. I, a, I have a, I have a short out from Popeyes. It's seven minutes. I'll send it to you after this because uh, you need to watch it. It's 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 not even about the disgust, David. It's the fact that after it was all done, it became a crime scene. The Popeyes because it was that bad infested. The DoorDasher called DoorDash support and they made her deliver the food. Legit, like true story. I mean, just <laughs> to me, that's just the most disgusting thing I've ever heard. Like, and I understand that they're out of country and they don't really understand how to handle some of these, but come on. Cockroach is a universal word. At <laughs> least uh, take it to the escalation team immediately, right? <laughs> like the, whatever they yeah, call it, escalation I mean, team. Um, because they made her deliver it and then the driver the told the lady. My old apartment, I lived like half a block away from uh, Popeyes. So to this day, I still can't smell Popeyes because I just smelt it all day. Basically. Yeah, that, that must. Yeah, that must be. Uh, yeah, that must be annoying. You definitely need to take a break. But um, yeah. in terms of that, um, is there anything else that we need to, to break down? I, I mean, I, I know in the next couple of uh, months, you guys going to push a lot of content, a lot of um, progression with the apps. But is there anything that we've missed? Um, any questions, guys? Put in real quick. Um, but I think I we have. Yeah. For which is like if you hear of interesting opportunities that pay well that i haven't talked about or just you've heard of a company that treats people well and pays well like please just let me know i would love to see what we can do to get those jobs for people so that's really my ask there that, David, you have definitely. research dude. you got to watch all these beyond the algorithms it's all we've done is talk about weird stuff <laughs> other, <laughs> other ways to earn other ways to earn money though some of them not even in app form yet but are out there yeah. yeah yeah and that's I think why we, hannibal we, mentioned it since you mentioned pharmacy which i'm not a big fan of pharmacy just because i think it's like liquor i think there's a little or at least there needs to be some training which the other apps don't provide but um uh you know i i think that if if it could be the medical courier space too that's huge right now very that's big absolutely yeah. huge and it pays huge yeah so i don't know what the you know, a lot I mean, of those yeah. places don't work off apps either. You gotta you gotta find these jobs on the internet through their websites. Yeah. It's like they're the perfect ones to be corralled right now. I was gonna say that because they don't have the technology, the infrastructure, but they still they still want high quality uh workers, people who are actually gonna do it properly and instead of waiting, you know, waiting for a couple of emails that come in from the website, the you you know, work yeah. with Paris, say, hey, listen, we got a, a you know, awesome group of people who actually take this seriously, we'll take care of that. So I think, that, yeah, the potential is is uh, unlimited on the kind of opportunity you guys can provide a lot of the gig workers across yeah. the country. You know, I sort of listened to the videos. So I heard, I think, remind me, like, Sempex drop off a couple of these you'll have mentioned at some prior point. Is that correct? Or Yeah, I think I'm the, I'm the last mile courier. I know we talked about drop off. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. On my end, we have one that we're chatting with right now, and they're actually they are on all fifty states, but they are headquarters and is in Hagerstown, and they are interested in you know seeing if we want. I think you know ha having a trial. So I think to some extent, if anyone here listening is in Hagerstown or around Hagerstown, you know, 
to some extent, Jimmy and I are probably going to fly and live in Hagerstown for a month, just as the ultimate backup in case we don't have anyone. <laughs> like, don't worry, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, yeah. So. Fair, fair, fair enough. I, um, I've this has been a great uh fast fast hour to be honest. Um, David, really appreciate 